making trading profits without consistency is meaningless. You're just going to end up losing those profits and going essentially nowhere. And that's why in this video, our head of trader development, Jeff Holden, gives you his four best price action trading techniques to build that seemingly elusive trading consistency. I'm Mike Bellafuri, and we're one of the top proprietary trading firms located in New York City since 2005 and proud to develop newer seven and even eight figure per year traders. Watch, take notes and learn from the leader of our trader development program on our desk so you can grow your trading account. We think price action trading is so important because markets shift. They shift frequently. And when they shift, a lot of times traders who are trading a specific strategy, uh, they won't be able to make that adjustment. The trade will start to look like it's going to work and then it'll start to work and then it won't follow through or even worse, it'll trigger your entry and then immediately stop you out. As markets shift, the strategies that you're going to use shift or need to shift along with it. One strategy that winds up being a really good trading strategy is just straight up price action trading. What you're doing with price action trading is you're actually trading against what's happening with the price action. So you're using a combination of the levels, you're using a combination of the price action to, you know, the psychology of the traders that are involved there to provide yourself with trading opportunities over and over. We had a really good conversation yesterday with the trader, um, I'll call him Ice. He's a trader on our desk and, and he was really struggling because recently he recognized that the market was sort of shifting. He recognized that the strategies that he's been using up for the last couple months just really stop setting up. And and again, like we said, even worse, they would when they did set up, which was much less frequently than it was before, they would trigger and he would get in and he would feel this sense of urgency to to take advantage of the opportunity because he hadn't seen it in a while. And he would oversize it, or really it felt like he was he was undersized, but it was kind of oversized relative to the opportunity. So he put himself in this really tough position. And what we're talking about today is price action trading is an opportunity to just take a step back and let the opportunity come back to you. Take a step back and, and really get back into that flow of just being a trader. So armed with these price action skills, you know, we're talk, going to talk about four strategies here that you can use for trades that you can use that are pure price action based trading. You can really put yourself in a, in a nice position. So we're going to jump right into it. Our very first example is going to be right on the open. And all we're using is the price action that's available here. You know, this is a one minute chart. As you can see, we have this really distinct area of resistance that's available. You know, this is the pre-market but really distinct area of resistance. When price trades up to that level, what are we gonna think about? Well, we're gonna think about, can it get above that level? And one of the trades that's really fast in our playbook is an up through the open. So you move up into a resistance level and then you come back down through the opening price. If the setup is right, you can take advantage of that. You can short down through the opening price with your stop right above the highs from the open. We have this up, through the open triggered. So we enter on that break, our stop goes above the high. And remember, you're just trading the price action here. So if it gets below that low, what are we looking for? We're looking for continuation to the downside. Okay, we're getting continuation to the downside. We're trailing our stop all the way down very, very quickly because this is just a price action trade. When you get a little flush out like that, you can take some of the trade off. You're just trading the price action. You're just trading the back and forth. All we're doing is capitalizing on the opportunity that's being presented by the market. We're not turning this into some big giant trade. We're just moving back and forth. When price then breaks this level, we're already onto our second trade here, by the way. When price breaks this level to the downside, the pre-market low, we can start to pay attention to what's happening. How are we responding to that pre-market support area? Again, price action trading. We're trading the price against the prior price, right? What are the participants involved doing? Well, we had a little failure there. Does that mean we have a trade? Not necessarily. We don't really have the setup, but we definitely recognize that the sellers were selling at that area below that prior support area. Now it's resistance. So what do we do? Do we chase it down? No, that's not actually a trade. What can we do though? We can wait. If this turns into a consolidation, that creates an opportunity for us. If this turns into a consolidation below 
the key area that was support, now resistance, that turns into an even bigger opportunity. So we're going to wait and we're going to see, do we get an opportunity to enter this trade or are we just guessing that we've got something here? So let's wait and see and look for an opportunity to enter a trade, an opportunity to be presented for us based on the price action. If you're hitting here worried about maybe this is just going to keep going lower and it's going to miss me, are you really in the right position? No, you're not. So you need to allow the price action to give you an entry, to give you a trade. We talk about this over and over and over again, let the trade come to you. And trading is so much better when it's coming to you. But now let's pay attention to the price action because what happens here will dictate so much of what we can do. Because if we keep going higher, are you going to be want to short here? No, we need to see the price action shift in our favor in order to take advantage of the opportunity. Now we have a shift. Now we have our second trade, which would be a short, ideally against basically that resistance area from before. And we've entered on the break lower. We had a distinct change in volume. So now we're looking for more of that continuation to the downside. Now we allowed the price action to give us an entry. We were able to see the way that the sellers really stepped in with aggression. And that gives us a very distinct area to enter our trade. It gives us a very distinct stop as well. So now we're just straight price action trading. This is a lot like scalping, but if you notice, that's pretty much a hitchhiker scalp. And if you haven't, if you don't know what a hitchhiker scalp is, you should definitely like check out some of the cheat sheets that we've done. But this is a straight up hitchhiker version of a hitchhiker scalp. So now we're just sitting with the trade and we're looking for potentially another wave lower. We're looking for another wave lower because the sellers were so much in control of the price action. So as we start to see this drive lower, what are we going to do? We're going to pay attention. We're going to watch the price action. We're going to put ourselves in a potential position to allow price to move lower in the trade. We're trading the price action. We're trading the way price is responding to itself. If we don't go lower, what do you do? Well, you just exit the trade. The sellers are not in control anymore giving ourselves a lot of freedom here, a lot of luxury to just kind of get a sense for how this stock is really going to be trading on the day. We don't have to come in and predict what the bigger picture trend is going to be, especially if that bigger picture trend isn't just going to play out. It can be really frustrating because if you're coming in and thinking, I'm going to catch this giant move and it doesn't follow through, you're missing the little nuances that we're talking about here that give you really good risk reward and really high probability opportunities. In certain tapes, it's so important to just go to those high probability, really good risk reward opportunities and risk an appropriate amount of your daily stop. Based on the psychology of the sellers and that volume that came in, we should expect a continuation move to the downside. So we're looking for that clue that we're getting continuation to the downside. What would be a change? Well, if we have a really distinct move back higher, then we would have to question, are we going to get that continuation of the downside or do we just exit our trade? We can move our stop down even because now we have this period of consolidation and we shouldn't really get much above that area. But again, we're price action trading. So as these candles develop, we can really start to get a sense for we should be going lower here. We saw that little moment where the buyers tried to step in and then the sellers stepped in. So what should happen? We should get continuation to the downside. The sellers should be in control. One of the hardest things to do is just sit back when you're in a trade and watch and listen to the price action. Let the price action be your guide. A big part of that is setting the appropriate expectations for what is happening and what should be happening. Now, what should have happened right here? You're probably thinking, well, we should have gone lower, right? We had that little failure. We had that little consolidation and now we should be going lower. Okay, we're getting a little follow through. We're seeing the volume increase. We're starting to see the price action move to the downside. We're getting exactly what we wanted. 
Do we have any reason to exit the position based on risk reward or anything else? No, we're just trading the price action. This is one of the best ways to develop a feel for the tape is taking the expectations off of yourself and just trading the price action. What should be happening next here? We should get that little pop and then we should see the sellers continue to drive lower. But let's take a step back and look at the bigger context of the trade. How many waves lower have we attempted? We had that first really big flush lower and then we had that second more gradual one. So we're at the point where the sellers are not getting rewarded in the way that they expect it to be. Have the sellers lost? No. Do we have a reason to really truly exit our trade to the short side? We're getting pretty close right now. But the bigger picture context here is we're trading the price action against what the expectations are. At this point, we don't have a reason to be short anymore. The buyers are stepping in. The sellers that we expected to be there weren't following through. Do we have a reason to get long? Should we just flip our position and get long because of that? No, we still need a trade to set up for us. Price action trading in general is essentially a conversation. And imagine a party. Imagine a party that all the room gets sealed off, right? So all the participants that are going to be in that part at that party are already there. What types of conversations do you think go on? Well, it probably depends a little bit on how much people are drinking, but in general, it's probably a relatively fixed number of conversations that any group of participants would have. You know, they probably start with some common themes and then they'd get in some interesting stories about each person. But the reality is that group is capable of a certain amount of conversations. They'll have some variety, but for the most part, that's pretty fixed. Trading price action is essentially making a bet that on this stock in this day, this scope of what we're capable of doing is probably about what we're capable of doing. We're probably not going to wind up in some random place, like occasionally maybe you would, but for the most part, we're going to wind up with the price action, the group of participants that are trading this stock today being relatively fixed. So when we swing too far in one direction, like we just saw those sellers try and step all the way back down and they weren't getting rewarded. So who would we think would get rewarded next? Well, it wouldn't be the sellers. So we're looking for an opportunity to go long with the buyers. We could take this for a backside scalp if we wanted to. We could enter right there as we break the high of the range because again, the sellers didn't get rewarded. Our stop would be right below that higher low and we'd be targeting VWAP. That's a very straightforward trade that we're just looking for the opportunity based on the price action. We could exit our trade here, but here's something that you'll see really good traders do, particularly when they're price action trading. They will immediately be thinking about what the next trade is. We get this question so often of, well, when you're trading well, what do you do? Do you stop? No, traders for the most part, especially on our desk, are just thinking about what the next trade is. And already we're seeing something called a fashionably late scalp. This is where we had that little drive lower and then we start to see the 90 MA converge. We're seeing that 90 MA cross VWAP, that would be your entry point. Our entry point would be right there, the 90 MA crossing VWAP. We would be looking for to risk down to here, you know, basically a third of the range. And we would be looking for about a third of that, the range from VWAP to the low of day to the upside. So as we get this extension into this resistance area, as we zoom in, we can watch the price action. As we explode or try and push through that resistance area, what's actually happening? How's the stock responding to that? Is it responding in a way that's showing us buyers are still in control? No. As soon as we see those sellers start to step in, that can be our reason to exit this trade. Again, we're just price action trading. We're trading the price against itself. When it comes up into that area of potential resistance, we can exit the trade and look for potentially a different trade. Now, some would argue that there's a very good short there into that resistance area, and I would agree, but let's jump into an even better short, a better continuation short. So. 
the better continuation short is going to come into play here. And what we're really going to focus on is what should happen. Right now, what should happen? We saw buyers step in at VWAP. The buyers should be able to push the price higher. They are not able to push the price higher. That tells us the price action. What is happening? The sellers are in control. So now we can enter short and look for our stop to be right here above the price action high where those sellers were stepping in. We can enter short looking for continuation to the downside. Why are we doing that? It's very simply, the buyers tried to step in right here and we're not able to. So now we're just looking for continuation to the downside. So let's pay attention to this again. Let's watch as the buyers try to step in here. You can see the buyers try and step in. You can see price trying to lift. You can see every time we push down, we're met with buying pressure. But notice we're not able to go any higher. Right there is a moment where we can pay attention to and we can say, all right, my stop would be right above here. And I would look for continuation to the downside entering somewhere in this candle looking for the sellers to maintain control. Again, all that happened was the buyers got a little maybe over eager to the upside into a resistance area. And now we're seeing the selling, you know, we're participating on the right side of the V, as we like to say. We're finding an opportunity based on the price action, based on the way that the stock is trading. What would we look for on the downside? We would look for continuation. And because it's a trade that it's showing that the sellers are in control, we're going to look for an opportunity where the sellers lose control to exit our trade. You know, this may seem like a lot of just back and forth, and it is. But sometimes that back and forth trading, we've talked about four trades, even if you took only two of them and you allocated an appropriate amount of risk, maybe 5% or 10% of your daily stop. Think about what you've done for yourself over this very simple trading day. First of all, you've taken the expectation away from this being a giant day that you are going to take a full advantage of a giant opportunity. A lot of trading days are not those days. A lot of trading days are just trading the price action that is showing up for us. So when you pick a good in-play stock and you see that it's moving around, we just covered four very distinct trades that you can make that you will see in stocks over and over. You'll see the up through the open. You'll see the overextension to the downside. You'll see the hitchhiker to the downside, that continuation sort of play. You'll see the backside. You'll see the fashionably late. You'll see that kind of continuation push. You'll see a fast move into a resistance area and then a distinct failure. And then you'll also see a fashionably late back to the downside. This is the way stocks move so often. And when you understand how to capitalize on the small movements in a stock and you understand on the nuances of what to look for to price action trade, you can put yourself in a really good position over and over and over again to just add PL. Let opportunities show up for you. Let opportunities fall into your lap. Take advantage of those opportunities over and over. It's a great best practice as markets are shifting to just get a feel for that back and forth trading.